Well said. And so when you define hypercoagulability, this is a term that's thrown around a lot now, or you could just call it increased coagulation. What they're really talking about is some sort of a buildup, like you mentioned, whether it's inflammatory cytokines or what's called fibrin, things that are affecting the capillaries, which as far as my research goes, it's pretty interesting stuff. Capillaries, they're so small that the red blood cells have to go in single file line to get through the capillaries. So if you have a buildup of fibrin from some sort of inflammatory reaction, whether it's to a mold or a virus or some other pathogen, that can affect those capillaries, which then will create some of the cold hands, the cold feet. So let me just riff on symptoms for a minute, and then we can go there. So uh, symptom-wise, let's say cold hands, cold feet, let's say cold nose, I would say erectile dysfunction could be a big one too for men. A lot of coagulation issues with men, you see uh, reduced blood flow. And of course that affects erections. I would say brain fog would be big too, right? You mentioned you got to have blood flow to get to the brain. So I would say brain fog, maybe memory issues, uh, fatigue. I would say muscle fatigue as well. So if you're noticing that you're having trouble lifting weights or you're having a lot of post-exertional malaise, could be mitochondrial related. We've talked about that before, but I think the coagulation could be part of it too. So uh, I'm a big fan of lumbrokinase, which is what I think is one of the big remedies that's really helped me. Lumbrokinase is way stronger than natokinase, which is very commonly sold. Lumbrokinase is like the big daddy, the big brother above natto. And I tell you, it's been an absolute game changer. If I take that, not only does my brain work better, but my hands and feet are warm. So just in terms of like solutions, you know, you could run a coagulation panel and I think it's easiest rather than trying to run through all the markers like D dimer and all that, instead of running through all that, I think it'd be easier. We could just like put a link in the show notes for like a coagulation panel app, uh, like that you could run through lab corp request. And then if people want to dive into it, they can, but I think those so are the on the, some of those markers. Uh, what would some of the markers that you'd look at on the coagulation side? Yeah, I'm not, I wish I had my lab in front of me. I could pull it up. I I'll give you a couple that I look at. I'll give you a couple that I look at. So we talked about inflammation. We talked about interleukins and cytokines. Why does that matter? Because the more inflammation you have in your bloodstream, the more sticky cells get. Okay. Because think about it, right? From an inflammation standpoint, why would your cells get more sticky from an inflammation standpoint? Right. Let's kind of look at what's, you know, what are the, um, the intentional, like what's the intention of our creator in making us, why would that happen? Right. Cause we have to look at the fact that there's an innate intelligence to why our body does things that it doesn't do it by accident. And I would say that most of our stress that we experience as we evolve as a species is through a cut, an injury, a fall, something very acute. So our body is trying to stick things, glue things back together, prevent us from bleeding out, right? Allow scar tissue to form to help heal and recover whatever that damage area is, right? That kind of makes sense. Now, the problem is we have less acute damage like falls and crashes and these things, but we have this chronic degenerative inflammation that's happening. So yeah, it's starting to create many bits of scar tissue, which Again, that is going to be making cells stick together. So you're looking at things like fibrin, increased platelet aggregation, meaning platelets are the little cells that flow through your bloodstream that help you create clots, right? Platelets then create fibrin. So it creates these clots. And so then you're having decreased blood flow because of clots because cells are more sticky because of inflammation. And that's there to help help your body um, do better when it comes to stress or something acute, but we're having this chronic degenerative stress. And of course, high levels of blood sugar, high levels of insulin are going to make your cells more sticky, right? This is why we see in diabetes, right? When Evan talks about a lot of the um, capillaries where they go single file, we see that a lot in the eyes. And so we see a lot of eye aneurysm stuff, a lot of eye issues in diabetics, a lot of limb issues because really poor blood flow in the capillaries going out to the fingers and the hands. So high levels of insulin from high levels of blood sugar, that also creates the advanced glycation end products, which are essentially the sugar coated proteins that are oxidized because of high blood sugar. And that oxidation depletes things like vitamin C and vitamin A and vitamin E. And so then we have less of these nutrients to help our eyes, to help our skin, to help our collagen, to help wound healing. And then you start to have very poor blood flow, decrease immune cells getting to the extremities, the hands and feet. And then you develop a gangrenous lesion on your foot with all this inflammation and poor blood flow. Then you have that have to have it chopped off because it starts to create an infection. So yeah. you can see how all these things start to spiral out of control. And so of course, blood sugar, inflammation um, is kind of the hallmark and how all this starts. We'll go more into things that you can do. So Evan mentioned 
like the lumbrokinase, excellent. Serapeptidase, the enzyme from the, the silkworm, excellent, right? These are systemic enzymes taken away from food. Those enzymes come in kind of like a roto-rooter or a liquid plumber would for like a, a, a clogged hair in your, in your drain, in your um, toilet, right? So it breaks it down, okay? Now we have to make sure we're getting to the root cause, but in general, that's helpful because it's not going to be as inflammatory. It'll break down scar tissue and has a lot of um, anti-cancer immune benefits because when it hits all these cytokines, it, it kind of dissolves them and breaks them down. So it does help reduce inflammation, which is great. Yeah. You made a great point too about diabetics suffering from this issue quite a lot and the blood sugar component. That's huge. And then also one thing to note too, when you do start to dissolve some of the fibrin, you may, if it's due to an infection, you may have some sort of a die off or like a Herxheimer reaction. So just keep that in mind. And obviously if you're working with one of us, we're going to coach you through that process. But if you have a practitioner that's maybe not aware of that, then they may not know why your symptoms are flaring up if you start to dissolve some of this fibrin. So for example, when I first started ramping up lumbrokinase, I was also doing some biofilm busting nutrients. And some may argue that you're busting biofilm with things like this. And so I had a reaction, you know, I got some headaches, I got some anxiety, I had some heart palpitations and some other symptoms indicating I was probably releasing something that was hiding within that fibrin.